Good morning, Laura McCungie Middle School students, staff, and community members, and welcome to the 2020 Laura McCungie Middle School Virtual Veterans Day program. The Laura McCungie Middle School Veterans Program began when English teacher Susan Coltisco sought to honor those that defended our country. Mrs. Coltisco and her husband Ben have both since passed away, yet we honor their memory and their dedication to our veterans and the students of the East Penn School District through continuing this moving program that they have so inspired. This year marks the 54th LMMS Veterans Day program. For 54 years, Emmaus Junior High School and now Lower McCungie Middle School have taken the opportunity to honor those that have served to protect the rights and the freedoms we as Americans so value. Today, I'd like to recognize all of those among us who are with us in person or virtually, who have been part of the great brotherhood and sisterhood we call the U.S. military. Our veterans, active duty service members, guardsmen, and reservists, your service and sacrifice have kept our country safe and free. Veterans Day looks a lot different this year than it has in the past. Our current state of affairs and the protective measures implemented across our country to stop the spread of COVID-19 have forced us to think creatively and outside of the box to ensure we stay safe while honoring our nation's heroes. We hope you enjoy our virtual Veterans Day program and remember to please continue connecting with our veterans and their families. Thank you for taking time to remember our heroes. They never gave up on us and we will never give up on them. Enjoy the program. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. Hi, this is Mrs. Campbell, Superintendent of East Penn and I'm honored to be able to join you to recognize the veterans from our East Penn community. Today is an opportunity for us to express our appreciation to those who have served our country. I recognize the annual Lower McCungie Middle School Veterans Day Assembly has a very long tradition. However, this year's ceremony, like many things in our world right now, will look a bit different. Throughout this virtual presentation, we will recognize veterans, each of whom has his or her own unique story to tell. The veterans vary in the branch of the armed force in which they served. They vary in the length of time they spent away from their own family and friends to protect us. And they vary in the conflicts and wars they fought to defend our freedom. Despite these differences, the veterans share several fundamental qualities. They all possess courage, pride, determination, selflessness, dedication, and integrity. My challenge for you, students, is to remember and honor our veterans, not just today, but every day. Model your own behavior after the qualities of our veterans. Now, more than ever, we need to be courageous, determined, selfless, and perhaps most importantly, we need to act with integrity. It is a privilege to join the students and staff of Lower McCungie Middle School in honoring our veterans today. On behalf of the East Penn education community, thank you to our veterans for your service to our country and for being positive role models for our students.
giving for the pledge, respecting the flag, celebrating July 4th. These are all common forms of patriotism. But there is so much more to patriotism than just that. Patriotism is a mindset, a belief system that influences our everyday lives. Patriotism is taking the steps that you believe are necessary to make the United States a better country, as our veterans have done in the past and as we will continue to do in the future. These steps will differ from person to person, but the important thing is that if you know our country will benefit from taking these steps, it is your duty to fight and push for them to happen. Another aspect of patriotism is pride. America was never completely perfect, and it still isn't, but patriotism isn't saying this country is perfect. Because it's not. Patriotism is not about perfection. It is about wanting and actively taking steps towards America being at its best. Some ways to do this are to vote for candidates who you think will be the better choice for our country and protest for what you believe is right. Patriotism is not only about caring for your country. It is about caring for the people. The current most effective way to do this is to wear a mask, social distance, and do your part in slowing the spread of COVID-19. Now, the last and possibly most important part of patriotism is respect. I know it can sometimes seem hard to respect America. We are a country full of corrupt systems, harmful stereotypes, and oppression, and these things are not to be ignored. But we must respect the people and the hard work that have gotten us to where we are today, the progress that has been made in the right direction. This progress has been made by our suffragettes, protesters, any citizens who vote, and most importantly, our veterans. We thank you all. I began to write this piece, I found no words. Then my teacher told me to speak from the heart. What does patriotism mean to me? Patriotism is not only fighting battles and winning wars. You may think patriotism is leaving your family behind, risking your life, and starting a new chapter that may be your final one. You may think patriotism is going big and never going home. The real patriots of our country are the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, right? The only patriots in our country are the ones who fought for our freedom, our veterans, correct? Patriotism, a devotion to and vigorous support for one's country. I respect our veterans and thank them for everything they have done for my country, for our country. Their passion, bravery, strength, allegiance, and loyalty to this nation makes them patriots. I can be a patriot, and so can you. You most certainly already show patriotism. When you celebrate the 4th of July, when you used to sing the grand old flag back in elementary school, when you stand for the pledge every morning, and especially when you vote. When you vote, you are being honest with your country, putting trust in the leaders for our country, keeping our democracy strong and alive every day. The more we express our patriotic feelings, the more powerful and tighter our bond as the country forms. Our devoted support and love for America allow the nation to blossom. Blossom into a beautiful and peaceful country ruled by love and patriotism. Every single person's commitment to this nation makes us stronger. Perhaps an American flag on the back of your car inspires another patriot to get one, and another, and another. That makes us stronger. Politics have divided. Hmm, that makes us stronger. Politics have divided our country into too many parts. If we set our opinions aside, show our commitment to this country, no matter our skin color, sexuality, ethnicity, religion, or political views. If we look past our differences and stand for the country we are blessed enough to live in, then everyone can be a true patriot. You can be a true patriot right now. I hope you already are.
That is me speaking from my heart. Thank you. Everybody, Rob Paradise here, joining you on Veterans Day from the basement of our house here in McCungie. Um, strange year 2020 with COVID and the election and everything else that's happened. <clears throat> um, so here I am, instead of in front of you in LMMS, uh, in my basement with a headset on, trying to do my best to replicate the excellent work your teachers do on a daily basis in bringing you a life through technology. So we'll check out my Zoom skills today uh, as we talk about Veterans Day. As I said, I'm Rob Paradise. I'm an Army veteran. Uh, I'm also Liam Paradise's father. Hey, buddy, how are you? And uh, I really wish I was there in school with you guys today, uh, but we'll have to make do with this video recording. Um, my wife is also an Army veteran. Uh, you might have heard her speak last year. Uh, and together uh, between us, um, her father, my father, uh, my brother and sister, her brother, her uncle, uh, and our son, Ryan, uh, have about 100 years of combined Army service. So um, we definitely are an Army family. Um, so we want to bring some of that um, appreciation for veterans to everyone here. So what are we going to do today? We're going to do a short video. It's about two minutes, a little bit of the history of Veterans Day, you know, why we celebrate it, how it came about, um, why we name it, uh, what, why we call it Veterans Day. Um, also then talk about three topics that I'd really like you to ponder while you're watching the video. Think about what these topics mean to you and then how you can reflect on those, bring them back to your home uh, and implement them in your daily lives. Um, you know, and those three topics are service, freedom, and country. Okay, so keep keep your uh, your minds on service, freedom, and country while we watch this video. And here we go over to the video. You probably know that every year on November 11, Americans celebrate Veterans Day to honor the millions of men and women who have served or are serving in the nation's armed forces. But bet you didn't know the whole story behind the holiday. For starters, it wasn't originally called Veterans Day, but Armistice Day, to commemorate the truce signed between the Allies and Germany in World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. The first Armistice Day in the U.S. was celebrated on November 11, 1919. All business was suspended for two minutes starting at 11 a.m., and parades and public gatherings were held to commemorate the occasion. Later, America also began honoring its unknown soldiers on Armistice Day, a tradition that continues today. At 11 a.m. every Veterans Day, a color guard ceremony represents all branches of the military at the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. In 1954, the name was changed to Veterans Day, following a national campaign to have the day honor all veterans, not just those who served in World War I. And did you know, for seven years, Veterans Day was actually celebrated in October? In 1968, Congress moved Veterans Day to the fourth Monday in October so that government employees could enjoy a long weekend. But in 1975, President Gerald Ford returned Veterans Day to November 11th due to the historical significance. And that's where it sits on the calendar today. And do you know the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day? Both of them honor those men and women who have served in the military, but Memorial Day honors America's war dead while Veterans Day honors all American veterans, living and dead. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that there are currently over 21 million living military veterans in the United States. More than 16 million of these served during times of war, while 5.5 million served during peacetime only. So this Veterans Day, don't forget to say thanks to some of the millions of men and women who have served our country. All right, I hope you everyone enjoyed that short video. You have a little better appreciation for what Veterans Day is, uh, why we call it Veterans Day today rather than Armistice Day, uh, and why it's on November 11th each year. I want to talk about those freedoms I asked you to consider while watching that video. Um, certainly, uh, you know, the freedom uh, that we have here in America is, is parallel to none, if you think about it. Um, amendment to the Constitution brought us freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of um, assembly, and freedom to petition. So, you know, 
you may not understand all of those, but to just take freedom of speech, you know, to, to live in a country where you can't say what you want to say and, 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 you know, express yourself in your own words freely and openly without uh, fear of repercussion or, you know, certain religions are illegal, um, right? And, and that's not, um, not that uncommon in this world. Uh, so, you, you know, really ask you to consider the freedoms that you have and the, the veterans have fought for um, in service to their country for you. Um, you know, it truly is amazing um, when you compare what we enjoy from a freedom perspective in our daily lives. It's easy to underestimate uh, what we do have here. Um, Beyond those freedoms, it's service, right? Veterans Day is about those that have served their country through, country through military service, whether that's the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, or the Coast Guard, right? Those five branches of military service have been, you know, defending this country in one way or another since its founding uh, almost 250 years ago, right? So you're going to say, well, I'm 12 to 15 years old. You know, I can't join the military and, and serve my country. But, you know, I'd say look at other ways that you can deliver service to your family, your community, your school, uh, or, yes, even your country. Uh, there are ways that you at that young age can, you know, see your neighbor struggling to shovel their driveway in the winter or, or before they even wake up in the morning, go over to an elderly neighbor and, and shovel their driveway. So when they wake up, um, they'll be so happy that their driveway is done. Uh, and, and you're not doing that to earn five bucks or 10 bucks. You're doing that for service for your community to help neighbors out. So, you know, when I talk about service uh, and, and the, the veteran standpoint, certainly it's service to country, uh, protecting and fighting for those freedoms that we enjoy. But I think service as well can go back to you and your life and you can bring it back home Tonight, just do something. Empty the dishwasher for your for your mom or dad. Um, offer to set the table, you know, without being asked. That's that's that being service minded. So I'd ask you to do that, and especially in this year of 2020, uh, a COVID year uh, that is so unusual and has changed all of our lives in so many ways. You know, the service that your teachers uh, provide to the community and to you and to your parents and, you know, the first responders, you know, they had to reinvent the way they work and put their own health and safety at risk to provide service for you. So, you know, yes, we're celebrating Veterans Day, but I think it also should be uh, on our minds to expand who we thank uh, and thanks, thank anyone who gives service to us uh, in our daily lives. And then finally, country. Um, we're, we're a young country. We're really still an experiment. Um, you know, 200, almost 250 years old. Uh, and I've been very fortunate to travel the world. And, you know, I often tell my kids, hey, guys, you know, I stayed in a hotel north of London uh, that predates Christopher Columbus sailing uh, to the U.S. It's like 550-year-old hotel. Um, there's breweries in Germany that brew beer, and they've been brewing beer on the same site for a thousand years. And uh, my wife and I were fortunate enough to go to Ireland, and we, we went into some rooms in Ireland that predated, you know, the, the Romans and, and Christ by, by 5,000 years, 5,000 years before Christ. So, you know, there, there's 7,000 year old ruins um, around the world. So really, you know, it's it's this country, this young country, this experiment. No, we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, um, but we, we are uh, a, a wonderful country. And, and when I travel, uh, I'm proud to say I'm an American. And uh, people often ask, you know, what, what does make American difference? And it's really freedom uh, uh, that we have and enjoy in America, the service mindset of people in America, uh, and, and that's, you know, together you look at all of that and it makes one great country. So go out there, uh, celebrate uh, Veterans Day. Thank a veteran if you see one. If you know one, call them um, to say thanks. And again, th say thanks to anyone who's give service uh, to you uh, throughout your daily lives. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. I certainly have uh, a new appreciation for what your teachers do with, uh, with the technology trying to bring this to you. I uh, hope you have a wonderful Veterans Day. God bless America.
When I wake up in the morning, I see nothing for miles and miles and miles. When I sleep in the evening, oh Lord, there she goes, only in dreams. She's only in dreams.
Good morning, LMMS students and faculty. I'm Chuck Jackson, and I'm the Patriots Pen Essay Contest Chairman for the McCungy Memorial of EFW Post 9264. Janet Hunt, the president of our auxiliary, is unable to be here today. So, what is the Patriots Pen Essay Contest? This contest is a nationwide contest to give you students an opportunity to express your view on a patriotic theme. This year, the theme is, What is Patriotism to Me? Post 9264 has enjoyed a wonderful relationship with LMS for many years. One year, almost 450 LMS students submitted essays for the award. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic interrupted that process, and it wasn't until last week when you went back to in-school learning that we restarted the application process. Post-9264 received 34 LMMS applications. They were up to LMMS standards. That number allows us to submit three applicants to District 8 for its Patriots Pen contract contest. Our post winners are, and I always do this backwards because I like to build up expectation, third place is Bill Isabella Scarlatta. The second place is Abigail Hoover. And the first place is Lindsay Taylor. Congratulations to each of you and to the other contestants. We will be inviting our winners to a post meeting to receive their awards from the post and its auxiliary. The importance, however, of the Patriots Pen Essay Contest is not awards or recognition. The importance is that it demonstrates that new students are learning the leadership and citizenship skills that will allow you to be the next generation leaders of your community of your religious organizations, and of your government. The sky is the limit. Please, set your goals high. You can achieve them. Thank you very much. Today's program has been filled with memorable music, words, and images. As we conclude our program, I ask that we all reflect on our hope for our future. Today is an opportunity for our future, our students, to honor and acknowledge our history and those that have helped shape that history. One thing our history has taught us is that the service and sacrifice of our armed service members is what allows us to have hope for our own futures. On this Veterans Day, I am reminded and comforted by a few things. First, that just as always has happened in our history, the bravery of the men and women in our military will continue to protect us and keep us safe. 
They sacrifice so much every day to be sure we can come to school, we can enjoy the upcoming season with family and friends, and dare to dream of our own futures. Secondly, I'm reminded that everyone with us today, our students, you are our future. Our young people should not take for granted the sacrifice that these men and women have written into our history. You should take advantage of the education, the technology, the innovation, and creativity which you are all afforded. Thank you for all who participated in today's program and for joining us in this honored Veterans Day.